If this had been a malicious script, we would have just started Sakagolish or Scarlet Goldfinch or Gootloader running. So we've given code execution to the adversary. They're going to go off to the races and do their things, downloading additional payloads, potentially leading to pre-ransomware, etc. That's a bad day. We don't want that to happen. So to put this into context, we're going to talk about a few different threats first. Sock Polish, Gootloader, Scarlet Goldfinch. What do these threats have in common? Aside from regularly being observed within our top 10 most prevalent threats within customer environments, all three of these threats rely on tricking a user into downloading and executing a JavaScript payload to launch their attack. So in the case of Sock Golish and Scarlet Goldfinch, both of these are in the class of threats that are commonly referred to as fake updates. So their MO is they will go infect a legitimate website with some code that when a user browses to it, it's going to pop up on their screen and say, hey, your browser's out of date and you need to go update Chrome. And it presents you with a link to download and update Chrome. Very convincing lure something that you know the user's coming along and you're like oh man you know this is the website that i was trying to visit and i guess my browser's out of date i don't want to get in trouble with it or security i'm going to go ahead and click this and, and update my browser uh convincing lure not something we really want to be training users not to do we don't want them to stop updating their software so user education is kind of tricky in this space uh because the lures are so are so convincing. So we're kind of wondering, well, how do we get around this JavaScript problem? How do we keep them from actually executing that JavaScript code? And that's where we're gonna get to here. So what other controls might we put in place? One of the things, if you think about what is happening on that machine when the user downloads that file and clicks on it, when they double click on a file with a JS extension, or VBS or any of their several other different scripting languages, Windows says, hey, what kind of file is this? You didn't tell me what program to use to run it, so I need to go figure that out. And so it goes and checks in the registry and looks up, well, what's the default program to open a JS file with? And by default, Windows will use the Windows script host file, wscript.exe. So when you double click a file from Explorer with a JS extension, wscript is going to execute that file. And WScript, as the name suggests, is a script hosting program that knows how to interpret that code and execute it. We don't want that code to execute. So why not just change that default program to something more benign, like a text editor? So instead of having the code execute, when they click the file, we'll just have, say, Notepad open the contents of the file for them to look at nothing bad happens, right? Now, is this something that might impact users? Depends on the user. Most users in their day-to-day -day role don't need to directly execute JavaScript code. If you're, if this isn't gonna interfere with what they're doing, the JavaScript that's running in their browser, their browser's still gonna handle things on web pages correctly. This is just if you've downloaded a JS file and try to execute it directly. And so, the cost of this is fairly low. You might have some developers who are trying to execute JavaScript and like comparing things, but they know what they're doing. They'll be able to execute it directly anyway. So this shouldn't impact business really in any way. So what's gonna happen then is they're gonna download it and double click to execute and nothing will really happen. I'm in a lab environment. I've spun up a Windows domain controller First thing I want to do, just for test purposes, to is get a file to execute. So I just came over to Google and searched for Atomic Red Team JavaScript. So what I'm looking for is an example of a benign piece of JavaScript that I could download and execute, kind of mimicking what that user would be doing when they see the, the fake update from a Scarlet Goldfinch or a Sock Bullish. So I'm going to go to Atomic Red Team. If you're not familiar, it's a great resource for doing this type of testing. In this case, there's a whole bunch of different scripts in here mapped to MITRE ATT&CK. 
I'm going to pull this JavaScript one. I'm just going to scroll down to the source folder and grab this sysinfo.js. So what we're looking at here, you can see it's just a very short benign script. It's going to go through and pull some basic information about my computer, like computer name, domain, manufacturer, that sort of stuff. So come over here, we can download the file. I've already done this. So bring it up and you can see here it is in my downloads folder. And just like a user who lands on one of those sock goalish pages and sees that they need to update their browser, they download the update.js file. Here's my version, it's a sysinfo.js. I've downloaded it, I'm gonna execute it. Just double click. Windows is gonna pop up and say, hey, do you wanna open this file? It's a JavaScript file. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I wanna update my computer or in this case, run sysinfo. And I'm gonna click open and you can see Windows script host is running and it is telling me now the domain. I'm on the RC lab. Here's my computer name, etc. running in Amazon. Okay, cool or not cool if you're the victim of one of these attacks. You don't really want that, you really don't want that code running. We don't want to allow the adversary to get code execution, which is what just happened here. Had that been a Sock Goulish or a Scarlet Goldfinch, it would have started executing their malicious script, which would have pulled similar uh, information about the computer, sent it back to the adversary, probably would have pulled some additional reconnaissance information and started to download additional tools like maybe a net support rat um, or other sorts of things that, that might be used for persistence, lateral movement, et cetera. Uh, those threats tend to lead to free ransomware behavior. Um, anyway, so not what we want to happen. What we really want to happen is something more benign. So it would be great if our user double clicks this and instead of executing it, we just get the contents popping up in Notepad. So to do that, I'm gonna come down here and bring up server manager on my domain controller. And we're gonna go up here to tools. And from tools, we're looking for group policy, right? So group policy management. And now you can see, here's what we're looking at. And what I'm going to do is to come over here into my group policy. We've got, we're gonna expand the forest and domains, RC lab local and default domain policy. If you're a sysadmin, you're probably well familiar with all of this. Um, maybe don't wanna mess with your default policies there for demo purposes. I'm just gonna do it right here real quick. So we're gonna right click this and go to edit. Within edit, what are we looking for? Um, so we want to go to our user configuration and preferences, right? And within preferences, it is under control panel settings. You will see folder options. So this is what we're looking for. We want to change the options for folders. And specifically, you can see there are no items to show right now. Um, I'm gonna right click that and go to new, open with. So I wanna create a new open with policy. My action's gonna be create, this is a new one. File extension JS, JavaScript. And our associated program, we're just gonna change it to C Windows notepad.exe. And set that as the default. So I set it as a default clicking apply. So I've applied this new policy. You can see it popped up there in the background. Okay. So now we've got this policy that says for folder options, when you're browsing an explorer and you double click on a JS file, we're going to open it with notepad. Now, before that's actually going to take effect, we've got to push out that group policy. So I'm going to run a GP update slash force in a uh, command terminal. So that might take a minute to run. Hopefully something is happening. Why is that not doing anything? GP update, of course. 
There we go. So now we're updating policy. It's checking to see like, oh, did anybody push out any new policies? Let's push them out to all the endpoints. You can see update is completed successfully. User policy update completed successfully. So now when I come back over here to my downloads folder and I double click on that sysinfo.js, still getting that same pop-up. Do you want to open this file? When I click open, here we are in Notepad. So instead of actually executing it, we're just opening Notepad and displaying the contents of that file to the user. So no malicious code has been executed. Problem effectively solved. Um, things that you might want to, that you might wonder about this. Is this, is it really that easy? Is it really that easy to prevent users from getting infected with Goot Loader or Sock Goldish or Scarlet Goldfinch? And so we set out to answer that question. We, we took a look um, through our different detections and in Red Canary and we said, let's look for examples where we see Notepad being used to open JS files. Now, there are some false positives with a, a, a hunt like that. You're gonna see maybe some developers or things opening up scripts, but typically developers, you're gonna be using a code editor more sophisticated than Notepad. So um, it's not that noisy of a, a search. What we found uh, were several instances in customer environments where they have implemented this advice and they're still, their users are still encountering these threats. They're still coming across those fake update sites, downloading a payload and double clicking it, but it's opening in Notepad. And if we look at those users, or if we look at those environments, those organizations that have implemented this, what we don't see there are any continuing malicious activity. We do not see Goot Loader, we do not see Sock Goldish, we do not see Scarlet Goldfinch. Keep in mind, these are top 10 prevalent threats that we see in most organizations. The ones, the organizations who have implemented this, we don't see those threats because it's been mitigated by this control. So hopefully that's something that can help you. One thing to leave you with is Chuck Fry, one of our Red Canary threat hunters, has been advocating this mitigation for years. He has this GitHub gist available to you. Um, he calls it ransomware extensions. A lot of this, these aren't actually ransomware extensions. He calls it that because a lot of the threats this blocks are things that potentially lead to ransomware. So implementing this control keeps you safe from ransomware in some cases. Um, so we just walked through doing this with JS files, JavaScript, JScript. Um, there are several other file types that you might want to consider. Now, some of these are things that might be more likely to be used, batch scripts in particular. Making batch scripts open in Notepad might break a lot of the automation, automated processes that your users are relying on, but uh, good things to test out and see how common they are in your environment and then implement these controls. Oh, 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 oh